Happy New Year, everybody. And in this video, I wanted to share with you some of the exciting projects I've been working on this past year. Things like co-teaching an Aircrete Dome Building Workshop in Utah, hosting my first live event at the Crestone Energy Fair in Colorado, building a custom Murphy bed in an Earthship tiny house in Taos, New Mexico, and learning about hyper adobe construction with Daniel Sage, publishing my new book, Earthship 101, A Beginner's Guide, continuing to improve my studio's light and sound, Oh, and did I mention my computer crashing? Anyways, I'll skip that for now and go right to the exciting stuff. But for those of you who want to know about that, I'll tell the story later in the video. I wanted to post this video because I've been offline for a while and some of you have been wondering if I'm okay and when the next videos are going to be released. Thanks for checking in on me. Everything's okay and I'm finally back in studio working on new videos covering the projects I mentioned earlier. And some of you have had suggestions on how to improve the audio and visual quality of my videos and I'm working on that too. I invested in a podcasting mic with a boom arm, extra lights, and a green screen background so that my background never looks like this again. Instead, now you'll see me sitting inside my new office in the Off-Grid Guru headquarters, which is actually a photo taken from inside the Earthship tiny house we finished construction on last year. And I documented the entire thing. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I'm going to put a link in the description and a button on the screen. And I'm loving the new look, but what do you think about my new background? Let me know in the comments section below. Now let's get out of the studio and into the field. After finishing the tiny house in Taos with Ron, we headed to Utah to help teach an Aircrete dome building workshop with my friend Ignacio. And a lot happened in 10 days. So I'm still working on the full replay video, but for now, here's a quick preview. These are our bricks from yesterday. Some of the best looking bricks I've seen like in a long time. Let's check out these bricks. Look at these beauties. Perfect squares. 12 by 12. Scott, you see the air bubbles in there? Yeah, these are beautiful bricks. Right here, we're oiling the forms so they can have a release, pure vegetable oil. We, uh, we just put it on there and it helps release the brick from the form. Everybody here is cleaning. Here, we're cleaning the forms. Everybody's putting them back together after oiled. And then this is our mixing station over here. The little dragon, the famous little dragon right here. This is what makes all the foam. We're gonna inject this into our 45 gallon drums with our mixer. Looks like that. Cement injected with foam. Yeah, this is a great crew. It's our family for the week. Returning from Utah, my friend Dan invited me to tour his wacky hyper adobe house that he built for $33,000. He's got a truly inspiring post-pandemic story that is even more inspiring when you learn that he had never built anything before. And the full video drops next week, but for right now, here's a quick look. You know, COVID hit and the pandy hit and uh, I just lost it. I just, I all my plans fell through and uh, it's just a familiar story and um, Luckily, I, I got some uh, <clears throat> sweet money from the government. It was almost like the government was giving me a severance check. It was like, here's the money you need so that you don't need us anymore. <laughs> I just came out and started digging. I knew absolutely nothing. I'd never held a cirque saw. I had never hardly used power tools. All I knew was dirt plus bags is somehow gonna equal house. Not many people are doing Hyper Adobe in the first place. Hyper Adobe that I ran after I went above grade was continuous, porous, but still plastic. Similar to like oranges, grapefruit, citrus at the grocery store, that kind of food grade mesh. You can get a roll of that, very inexpensive, and I use less than two rolls um, for the whole house. Uh, I think for Hyper Adobe bag material, I spent 
me like seventy dollars. How many? How many dollars? Like eight hundred dollars? Seventy or eighty dollars. Yeah. So dirt plus bag equals house. Dirt plus bag equals house. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know with the earth bag, individual bag, I would say pounds. Uh, and you do technically tamp both, and that's a huge part. You have to do that. Um, but when I think of hyper adobe, I think of uh, like a lay or a snake, like our big earth snake. So do you have a tool that helps you? Yeah, so we designed and built our own Hyper Adobe Ninjas, is what we're calling it. And basically it's just a bunch of um, cheap stuff from Harbor Freight. Um, but it's a funnel that's specifically made for earth bags. Um, you can find that on Amazon for 60 bucks. It's a dolly from Harbor Freight and it is just a bunch of scrap wood. So this is an Adobe Ninja. Uh, it has an earth bag funnel attached to a dolly. And this is what we use to do Hyper Adobe. It was time to start planning for my first live event, the Off Grid Guru Builders Panel, which just so happened to fall on my birthday weekend. So to celebrate, I invited some of my inspirational builder friends to join me in Colorado for what turned out to be a very entertaining discussion. And I just finished editing a video of the Builders Panel, which is posting soon. But for now, here's the highlights. Like he was talking about rain the last few days. It's been biblical storms. Like, I mean, I'm seeing like roof leaks that has provided job security for, for me for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't have to pound tires anymore. All I gotta do is fix roofs. If you could create a technology that made your life easier, what would it be? It could be related to building specifically, but could be also something else. I would create a electromagnetic interference gun that I could focus on people's homes and disrupt their existing grid lifestyle so they would have to think about how to use their resources in a more thoughtful way. Oh my God. How am I supposed to follow that one? Did you know you were married to a supervillain? Yeah, now I do. You know, I don't know what the hell even actually they're talking about here, all this off-grid, uh, fancy schmancy stuff. You know, why should I care about that? Because to me, all I need is a pre-manufactured box. So you need to be autonomous, resilient, and independent, and modern. Eric, please. Eric, you're an artist. Why would you want to live in a box? I'm not going to stand for it. Are you going to stand for it, Eric? Because that's basically what you're wanting. Ah, ah, yes. <laughs> Roast away. <laughs> <laughs> What a blast. And by the time you see this, the video might already be live. So I'll be sure to update the description with a link and add a button in the screen. And after that, I headed back to Taos to get back to work. My next project was designing, fabricating, and installing a custom Murphy bed in my friend Isaac's tiny house. And I'm still waiting on some custom couch cushions to put a cherry on top of that project and release the final video. But you know the drill by now. When that drops, I'll add a link. This next project has been on my to-do list for years, and I finally checked it off the list. Ever since I launched the Earthship Model Kit back in 2016 on Kickstarter, I've wanted to create a dedicated beginner's guide to Earthship housing. And after much hard work, it's finally here. Earthship 101. It explains in plain English the six principles that make Earthship some of the most sustainable buildings in the world. And it's our first publication since starting the Off Grid Guru channel. So it even includes a cute bio about my dad and I. We even gave our retail display at the Earthship Visitor Center a facelift to celebrate the occasion. The LED screen has been my dad's idea for years and we finally did it. And lastly, we didn't make these so they could gather dust in our closet. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting some awesome educational material in return, then visit theoffgridguru.com. You can find a link in the description below. In addition to the educational content, I also needed some merch to fill up the booth at the energy fair. So I designed and ordered the first Off Grid Guru t-shirts, stickers, and frisbees. And I'm talking real frisbees, not some cheap promotional. Each one is a quality 175 gram ultimate frisbee disc and I went all the way designing them myself, drawing inspiration from the classic Discraft Ultra Star. What can I say? I've been playing Frisbee my whole life and I've always wanted to order my own custom discs. Yeah, I just didn't realize that my face would be on them. It just turned out that way because of the branding. What? Anyways, that's about it for the updates. The bottom line is, I'm back and better than ever. And I've got a bunch of videos coming your way. Like Dan's home tour video, where he explains how he built his house with Hyper Adobe. 
that's dropping next. And after that, the full replay of the Off Grid Guru Builders panel discussion. Both videos are a ton of fun and a great way to kick off the new year. So be on the lookout. All right, if you've stuck around this long in the video, then I'm sure you want to hear about the or you want to hear about the story of how I had computer troubles that set me back for two months. And it's a long story, but here's the cliff notes. Back in 2020, I was serious about starting this channel, and my old MacBook was on its last legs. So I financed the new MacBook Pro at Best Buy. It was a 2019 model, and supposedly the best hardware I could get my hands on at the time. And luckily I bought Apple Care for it, but we'll get to that part later. Fast forward about two years later around the time of the Builders panel, so we're talking like late summer 2022. One of the USB-C ports goes dead, and with these new oversimplified computers, losing one port is a huge deal. So I did a bunch of troubleshooting myself, and I couldn't get the port to work, but everything else worked fine. I could still edit videos. So I decided it wasn't worth the hassle driving to Geek Squad in Santa Fe because I'm in Taos, and that's an hour and a half drive. It's a three hour round trip. That was until it started randomly rebooting. At which point I started frantically backing up every ounce of data I had on external hard drives and in the cloud preparing for the worst. And as you could imagine, my life's work is wrapped up in this computer. So I was not happy about bringing it to the Geek Squad. Luckily I had Apple Care, so at least if it was totaled, I was covered. But that doesn't mean I want to give up my computer. And that's when the month-long saga of sending my computer back and forth to Apple Care began. And it was almost every weekend I was driving to Santa Fe to check up on my device three hour round trip each time. And the ensuing back and forth compartmentalized corporate runaround was a mind boggling waste of time. But I can give you just one bit of advice. If you buy a new Mac, definitely get Apple Care. And if you send in your device for repair, do everything they say to prepare it before sending it in. Because you see, in my case, I didn't turn off the find my device feature and that prevented them from working on it. And so they sent it back to Best Buy. So don't forget to do that. And I know what you're thinking, why did I fill out all of my contact details on that form before putting it in, so that Apple could contact me if anything went wrong and they needed my help? Well, they literally called me once before sending it back. Not a text, not an email, letting me know that they tried to call me but couldn't get a hold of me and need my help. After all, it's extremely easy to miss a call. I could be on do not disturb mode or literally anywhere in Taos where there's no signal because I live practically in the mountains. So in the end, my computer took two round trip flights to Apple Care, and when it finally returned a month and a half later, the port was still dead. And luckily I was being helped by the same Geek Squad representative who had been working with me this whole time, and he knew my situation. He offered to pull some strings and get me a replacement computer, which of course at first I was hesitant. You see, I didn't want to give up on my baby, the computer that I built this channel on for the last two years. But I finally started to see the light at the end of the tunnel when I heard about the M1 chip. Because apparently, even though I thought I was getting the best piece of technology when I bought my computer back in 2020, which means it was the 2019 model, if I had just waited till the end of that year, I would have had a much faster device. Especially when it comes to video editing. And yeah, I know, even though it seems like this year's model is always faster than the last year's model, this time it's actually different. They explained for me that when the M1 chip hit the market, it was the biggest jump in GPU and CPU processing speeds in the last 20 years. But that's not what I'm here to talk about, so if you want to learn more about it, give it a quick Google. So even though it set me back basically two months, even though it was a month and a half with the Best Buy thing, you know, it took time to prepare my computer to send it in, and then when I got the new computer, it took time to, you know, upload all of my old stuff on the new one, and then finally get back into the groove. So really, you know, we're talking two months away from the channel uh, just because of this uh, fiasco. But when all was said and done, it was a blessing in disguise. Because now I'm equipped with even better tools to keep doing my work creating content for you guys. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Give it a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments section below.